Hi, I am Dr. Melissa McCartney. I am your instructor for Phil 458, Critical and Creative Thinking. I hope that you liked the first week, that you found the assignments and reading engaging. Um, as we move into week two, I just wanted to reflect back on week one. Um, I have some notes here, so I'm gonna read. I really liked the discussion about perception. I think that um, there, were a, there were a lot of conversation going on and some really good thoughts. Um, Shamim uh, brought up her example of being a nurse and the importance of the patient's perception of the nurse and their confidence. And if you go in and you look nervous, what kind of message does that convey? I thought that was really cool. Um, Jacqueline um, talked about the perception um, and, and the ver your own version of reality and can you trust it? I thought that was really good. Um, Felicia talked about um, where per perception of the way people dress and the assumptions that it made about you and that sparked a really interesting conversation. And Cheryl talked about that perception was 50% what you feel and 50% of what you think. And I think that was right on because perception really is the information that you get through your senses and then that's filtered through your thinking process. So um, it can be flawed because not everybody's sensory or their process is the same. Um, it reminded me of, there's a story on the news last week about um, children who have no sense of pain. So what we think of as reality, a hot stove is a hot stove, it's red, either it's gas or it's electric, but it's hot. Um, for a child who has no sense of pain, their perception doesn't register it. So they put their hand right on the stove, it's not hot to them. What is reality isn't the sensation then, it is that there is energy in the form of heat in that stove. So um, excellent with, the, with that observation, Cheryl. Uh, Amy talked about um, interactions in the terms of biases and social groups and ethnic, ethnicity and gender, and especially the gender pay gap. And I think that's really interesting because then your biases start to put a value on people, a literal monetary value on how much that person's worth. So, um, I tend to end the day with, all right, all in a, a dollar, all, all a dollar a day or something like that. But it's really, you know, 70 cents, I mean, with the gender pay gap. Um, Thomas says that um, perceptions and first impressions um, can be really important. And he gave the example of in an interview and that his gut reaction has been wrong. And so he has developed a process of um, interviewing when he goes through an interview, things to look at so he doesn't rely so heavily on his first impressions. And I totally get that, Thomas. I have the worst first impressions and I have to remind myself that, that I am in fact terrible at first impressions because those perceptions come in and I don't know, you know, you get that, the filter of what you think right, right back out there and it may not be accurate. Um, and then Amy talked about, my perception is my reality. Um, and it may not be the truth, but it's my reality. And again, this is spot on. Um, as we go through the course, we have to be really careful how we use the word truth. And so I'd ask that you use the word as it is in the textbook. Um, and in the textbook, truth, like with a capital T, is something that everyone can agree on. There is no debate. This is what the truth is. And that will help us in our conversations about my personal truths or the truths of my community and this is the truth. If anyone can argue it in terms of this class, it's not true. It's your reality, it's your perception, it's your belief. And everyone is entitled to those, but just be really careful about using the word truth um, for the rest of the class. Um, other topics that really took off this week in the, in the discussion post were ethical dilemmas, and Felicia had a really great one about um, witnessing an affair and whether or not she should talk about it with someone. Um, and um, 
what was interesting to me is that the resolution for that uh, and a lot of ethical dilemmas is how would I feel and what would I do if I walked was in their shoes and so we rely on our own empathy and compassion to a answer a lot of those ethical questions so that was great um, and Judith had another example about um, catching a manor, manager behaving badly and not treating employees as she thought they should be treated, um, which raised some discussion about retaliation, which I thought was really in interesting. Um, as far as the class goes, excellent. I'm really happy. I'm really impressed with all of you. Um, I noticed that a lot of discussion posts came in over the weekend. So if you can post those earlier in the week, it really helps me be able to engage with you better. Um, and, and everyone else in the class has more to talk about when there's in there. So use the app, the University of Phoenix app, and do it on your lunch break and just shoot off something early in the week so um, there's more conversation and the discussions. Um, the other thing is read the textbook. It's a short textbook. The chapters are short. It's interesting, but you won't, you won't get a great grade unless you read the textbook because I'm relying on the definitions in the textbooks. It's very easy to Google, you know, what is creativity, the topic for next week. And you'll get about three hits deep, but that I want you to learn more than that. So I want you to engage in the textbook. It is interesting. And then use your own experiences to enrich what you find in the textbook. Um, this class is really interesting. If you do that, if you read the textbook and you allow for a different perspective than your own, man, everything changes with this class. So I can tell you that you will never read a Facebook post argument the same again because you will be able to know people's hidden premises, their errors in logic, their hindrance to the truth, their faulty arguments, and you'll, you won't be able to just um, you know, read them the same way as you always have. So that's, that's a cool part about this course. Next week, um, we're talking about the creative process. It's a, it's pretty interesting. Our textbook has a, you know, kind of linear way of being creativity, being creative, um, and, and see if that's your method. It, it is in everyone's, but it's, it's, you know, a nice way to think about it for, especially for those people who don't necessarily view themselves of, as creative. You'll see that there are lots of creative things that we do, even for non-creative people. Um, there are your assignment this week is the creative spark analysis so you'll do a little bit of research you'll do an internet search for um, what particular creative person and then diagnose their their characteristics of what makes them creative and that's a good assignment um, there's another activity in the class this week that's about um, what motivates us and if you're a manager or, or looking to be in a manager type role it's a really good activity um, to, to do so uh, welcome to class. I'm excited for the, the next four weeks. Um, your assignments were due last night. I will probably start grading them this evening, shortly here. Um, if you have any questions or if you need anything, please uh, reach out to me in private messages and uh, have a great week. Thanks.